Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck and we're gonna talk about the Seven Water series by Juliet Marillier part one. This video will be a review of the first three books of Juliet Marillier's Seven Water series and possibly some rambling after the review. These are books that I actually have read many times but I recently reread them in 2017 so I wanted to talk about the first three and I'm in the process of rereading the second three because there are six books in the series total and then I will do another book talk about the second three books in this six book series. These three I think were originally published just as a trilogy and then some years later she decided to continue the series and wrote the next three books. So that's part of why I'm kind of splitting it into two. In the Seven Water series the first book is Daughter of the Forest, the second is Son of the Shadows, and the third is Child of the Prophecy. These books are a Celtic historical fantasy. They take place in Ireland in Erin, I believe. It follows a family through generations. They are the family of Seven Waters and Seven Waters is a place that is surrounded by forest. In this forest the fair folk live and they kind of have a symbiotic relationship with the family of Seven Waters uh, because the fair folk take care of the, um, the family or the residents of Seven Waters by keeping out people who might mean them harm, by uh, making them get lost in the woods and distracting people and luring away others who have nefarious intent. And the family of Seven Waters take care of the forest. They make sure that no one cuts down the trees and gets rid of the forest because it's also during a time when more and more forests were being cut down. This series follows the generations of women in that live in in Seven Waters. In Daughter of the Forest we follow Sorka. Her mother has died and she has six older brothers. Her, her father eventually decides to remarry and he marries a woman who hates Sorka and her brothers and curses them. Only Sorka can break this curse but at a high price and there is involvement from the fair folk and aid from them but they cannot break the curse for her so she has to go through many trials in order to break the curse that is on her brothers and it is a story of sacrifice and love and family and dedication, loyalty, determination, struggle. It is a great story. In this book Sorka is a healer also which is one of the things that I love a lot about it. I love stories with healers in them and she also has a great relationship with a lot of her brothers. I love the dynamics that they have with her and her brothers. There are six of them but I think that she does a really good job of making each of them distinct and their relationships to their sister. Each one has a very distinct relationship to her. I especially love the, the relationship between Sorka and Finbar. Um, they're the closest of her uh, brothers and they, I love their relationship. They are both very um, kind of quiet, reflective kids and they, because it starts out where she's fairly young and then it goes over a period of a few years. But I really love their dynamic and their deep understanding of each other. I would put a warning on this book for rape, so if that is something that you do not want to read about, then I would say avoid this book. The next book in the series is Son of the Shadows. This follows the next generation at Seven Waters. It follows Leoden. Again, I'm trying to pronounce it. I'm not 100% sure if that's how you say it. But Leoden is also a healer and she is well known as a very good healer. So she is kidnapped by a band of uh, mercenaries kind of to help heal one of their men. And her story kind of takes off from there. She again is a child of seven waters 
who lives and is happy at Seven Waters. She loves the people there. She loves her family. She's a healer and she is well known and well loved by the people as well. So she is not a character who is thinking like, I need adventure. And that's one of the things that I really liked about her and about most of these stories is that none of them are these characters that are like, I'm gonna go get an adventure. I'm gonna go make trouble because I need excitement in my life. She's very happy with her family, she's very happy with her life, and then trouble kind of comes upon her and she rises to the occasion. Leoden's story is also, um, has the hand of the fair folk in it. They always have some something to say about what's going on with the children of Seven Waters and they have a hand in all of their destinies. So the fair folk are in this one as well. This again is another story about family and love and loyalty and really that dedication and belief in people. Leoden is someone who really believes in people. This one also has a romance in it. The first book had a romance in it too, but this one has kind of an angsty romance. So if you like angsty romances, then you may like this one a little bit better than the first one. I would suggest reading them in order, but this one definitely has a more angsty romance than the first one. The love interest in this one is one of those like dark brooding damaged men who need someone to like fix them or like convince them that they're, I don't know, a good person even though they've done bad things. I don't know. It's a very enjoyable romance. It sounds kind of like ridiculous the way I'm saying it, but I do really enjoy the romance in this one. And this used to be my favorite of the trilogy, actually. It has changed now, now that I've reread it, but it is definitely a very enjoyable one. This one has a lot of drama in it. Um, I think in comparison to some of the other one is definitely more like angsty. And the third book that I'm going to talk about is Child of the Prophecy. So this is the third one in the series. This again follows the next generation of this family of Seven Waters. Although in this one we follow Fane, who is not raised in Seven Waters. She is a part of that family, but she is raised um, by the sea somewhere else. And she's raised by her single father and kind of lives her life as if she is a druid. Then later, her grandmother, who is kind of evil, comes into her life and starts to manipulate her and her father. And her grandmother manipulating her is what really starts her story off, sets her off on this journey as she heads back towards Seven Waters to find out more about her family who is there and possibly do some bad stuff while she's there. Not because she wants to, but because her grandmother is threatening and manipulating her. And also in this one, once again, we have involvement from the fair folk, both good and bad. In this one, Fane really grapples with ideas of like doing what is right, where is her loyalty, what parts of her family is her loyalty to, because she has um, her father, her grandmother, her extended family at Seven Waters that she hasn't really known throughout her life, and then loyalty to herself and what she believes is right, and kind of trying to balance all of these different um, people and desires and uh, people telling her what she should or should not be doing, trying to do her best because she's in a really difficult situation because of her grandmother um, manipulating and threatening parts of her life and people in Fane's life. So she has to make a lot of decisions and really figure out how to work around what her grandmother is doing and how to cause, like, do what her grandmother wants but cause the least pain for others as she can. It's a very difficult uh, place to be in. This one definitely has a very slow burn romance in it. Most of the time you're not even like aware that it's going on and then it kind of like pops up at random places. Um, but this is definitely more of a friends to romance kind of or friends to lovers kind of 
uh, romance in this one and I really really enjoyed it. I really enjoy all of Juliette Marillier's books. These first three are probably my favorite of the whole series. Um, it has it was interesting to me for rereading them that my opinions of these books have changed. When rereading Daughter of the Forest, I used to think actually when I was younger that this was the most boring of the series and I actually really enjoy it now. I like the detail and complexity that it has and how it really shows her brothers and her family. I don't rem I didn't remember the amount of detail and in individuality that went into her family and describing the brothers and their relationship to her and I really enjoyed that in this one. In the second book, this, as I said, this used to be my favorite book of the series, mostly because of the angsty romance which was in it. Although this time reading it, there were some things in the romance that I realized were kind of like, maybe not the greatest because one of the characters in the romance feels like they can't express their feelings because the other one will think that they're trying to manipulate them. So I was like, that's not great. They feel like they can't like openly express their feelings. Otherwise the other one's gonna be like, oh, you're crying. Like you cry on command. That's manipulative. Not because they actually like have feelings like a human being. And then like sometimes that leads to crying. So like that wasn't the greatest, but that's something that I hadn't picked up on before, which is why I love rereading books because you have such a different perspective when you reread them. The third one is actually my favorite now. So the first time I read this, this was my least favorite of the series. There was the first time I read it, there was actually a chunk in the middle that I just like completely skipped because I was so bored and I was just like, eh, I don't need to know this. And then I like went back and reread it and like read it later. But this time while reading it, now that I'm older, this is my favorite book of the original three. I thought it was the most interesting. It is the most, I think, complex in terms of the inner struggle of the character. There is a lot more of the main character being put in difficult or impossible situations where she has to really struggle within herself and figure out who she is, what is she willing to do, what kind of sacrifices will she make, what is right and wrong, and how will she make these decisions. So there's a lot more of that inner struggle and that inner like character development, which I really love. I also really love that like slow burn friends to lovers relationship that's in it and that the um, love interest in this is like just it's a very wholesome character and I think that when I was younger I was much more into that like angsty broken kind of love interest but now I'm much more into like a cinnamon roll kind of love interest and that's more like what this one has. Overall I highly recommend reading Juliet Marillier's books. I highly recommend this series. Uh, one thing I would say going into these just know that they are very uh, slow books. They're not like a rip-roaring adventure. They're very slow. It can be a little dense sometimes, but they're really worth it. Her writing is beautiful. The characters are wonderful. The stories are great. The world that she builds and the like atmosphere that it has is this wonderful, like very classic folklore feeling, very foresty. It has great magic in it that I love that kind of like naturey earthy magic that has that sort of like herbalism kind of magic involved and the way that she does the fae or the fair folk in this is also great it's one of my favorites it's very classic way of doing the fair folk um the way that you kind of have to outwit them it has a very classic folklore feel to it actually the first book daughter of the forest is based on a traditional Irish story also. Um, so they all, but they all have that kind of classic folklore feel to them that I love. So just know that they are slow moving books, but they're so worth it and they're just fabulous. So that is all for part one of my review of the Seven Water series by Juliet Marillier. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye.